Good afternoon, my peoples. Um, what are we doing today? Um, we had that two-part uh, set of videos where um, my motor seized up on my uh, GSR in my EK hatch. It's my race car. It's my one of my favorite ones, and I also daily drive it because legal reasons for the other one in my wagon motor still not in yet because we still have a lot of stuff to do because I want it to be perfect because once you pull the motor that's the chance to do everything because you're not going to put the motor in drive around and been like oh man i forgot to paint the subframe you're not going to do that like everything's going to get done while the motor is out so that's why the wagon is taking time because it's going to be done right so today uh i'm finishing up um trying to button up the rest of the work that has to be done so right now we need to remove the old wiring harness which should not be a terribly hard task so i'm doing it by myself and then hopefully my housemate will be home the next hour or so and we can hopefully fire this bad boy up but also we need to change the brake so i have new uh rotors and pads so i'd like to do both those things in this video so it should be wiring number one uh replacing my gsr harness with uh like a modified ex harness and then maybe even if we have time if we get both those important things done and this bad boy's running then I would love to get the transmission off of my GSR and then get the engine up onto one of our engine stands and start uh, cracking that bad boy open, take the head off, uh, see what's going down down below. I mean, I think even just draining the oil would probably tell us a lot if there's anything in there floating around. I hope we can continue. Uh, one of the things I got as feedback is like, I need to be more careful when I introduce sound into a video, like when I do the time lapse. Um, I like to put in some audio from the uh, video editing editing app, and um, I guess it comes in a little bit too loud. But also too, because where I live, I got a lot of jackassy country neighbors who just want to sit outside and rev their dirt bikes. And I as you could probably hear, and I try to be very considerate of my neighbors because my cars are loud and I don't sit there revving them as fun as that is as uh, honda owners can attest to uh, here's my old harness we're going to go with this a little bit um it's in pretty good condition um i think we just modified my civic cx harness to make this one uh that's why we had to add in things like i'm not sure what this ground was for but i'm sure it was important so that was bolted in and then uh as we come down the line you know all the standard plugs like sometimes things had to be added into this jumble like um oxygen sensor uh because this car first went to a, a d16 y8 from a y7 and on the y8 their secondary o2 sensor is part of the cabin harness so i think we had to add an o2 sensor to this harness and then um we also had to add a plug for the iabs which i had to make sure to, i had to find that online when i had bought the whole system and that is uh under here right there that's that bad boy right there and then uh yeah and then extend a few things just to make sure everything reached so with the new one i'm pretty sure this was a civic ex harness that uh my friend got from the junkyard where we find all good things and i think he just uh made sure everything was where it needed to be I guess usually we try to keep the injectors somewhat low profile and we separate them and we run them through the middle here and then so all you see is just the wires coming out of the top but he's like this time it's just a normal harder so once everything gets plugged in it's just gets slumped over the top and i am totally fine with that because i just want it to work i care little about how low profile it is so let's get some uh, time lapse going again let's get this bad boy uh plugged in
continually making progress. I got a lot of these things plugged in um, to the best of my ability. I think my housemate's gonna have to come through and shorten some things and lengthen some other things because uh, he knows what we're doing here, but I don't think that he was actually measuring when he did some of these things. So some of them seem a little bit longer than need be. Like this one, I mean, what else is this gonna plug into? And I have just like days of extra. Well, other things are very short. And this moves a lot of plugs. Sorry, it's looking at my arm. Onto this side. But they won't quite reach. I mean, I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's focusing right there at the end of my fingernail. There's that plug, which obviously there's not. There's like one other plug that looks like this on the other side of the motor. And that is very far away from there. So a lot needs to be adjusted. And it might just be loosening up some of the loom i have to take off that plastic piece altogether so that uh i can just stretch these a little bit farther but yeah the injectors came over no problem and they definitely clip in a very apparent order uh, it's a plug right here and i do not know what it connects to so the hunt continues at least everything on the inside is uh a lot simpler because it's pretty much color coded or just uh limited by shape and what you can reach uh, it's really easy for me to get right here because i'm my glove box out because i pulled out this i want to say evaporator whatever that core is i pulled that out and i put it back in because i was just going to leave it empty because i don't have ac in here and i needed to put that ac unit in my other car um but i got halfway through and it's just kind of stuck here for a hot minute. I need to seal this up between these two boxes. So more projects to come. But so as we're looking in here, um, this is my old computer. But I unplug this big boy. You see like Integra one, Civic one. You see, it's just like obviously a size difference. Uh, not that size is what's important here. Uh, yeah, so this was the P72A02. And the important thing about this one is this was from the 96 GSR. And this is a 96 Civic. And why that went well is not only did it plug straight in, but also it does not look for a fuel tank pressure sensor, which I have two of. I got from the junkyard, but I have no idea how to wire them in because this computer will definitely look for it. Um, it wasn't a problem in my 2000 because it has one, I'm pretty sure. I didn't actually check, but I don't have a, a code for that. And that's a 2000 GSR ECU, so it should definitely look for it. But on my uh, white hatch, which has a B16 in it, now also um, it runs the same computer, which is a P2TA12. Yeah, so just a manual Civic SI computer. So I'll get this all plugged in, and then we'll get back under the engine bay and finish up under there. All right, questions have been answered. Um, so I was told to put it on the car. That way we could see what needed to be extended. And I only plugged in a couple things wrong. So as to be expected, boom. I didn't mean to surprise y'all. I was wondering what this black plug was that came off the harness, like right under, like where I'm pointing it right there. But it goes to this. The thing I did not have on here. So I'm going to plug this back in. It's like a, everything's got to be legal. Listen, people, don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. And don't blame me when you blow stuff up or cross thread things like that. But uh, this is the one for the 992,000 years. And so I will get this all plugged in because we're going to make this thing obviously carb legal because who would record themselves doing something criminal? Look at our skin color. Yeah, not that. We're not them type of people. All right, moving on. So a couple plugs I was confused about. Since this is an EX harness, it has uh, a few more features than a uh, clapped out. I think this is a, I think this is a CX. This is a CX model. So obviously in a CX model, it'd be very rare for me to have power steering. So there's a plug for the power steering. Delete, don't need it. And then there's also a plug that has four wild wires. Is that the crank angle sensor? Three wire. What was that plug that I we didn't need? It was three wire. Yeah, probably the crank angle sensor. Don't got that. Because it's a JDM motor for one, and also that serves the same function as a distributor. The mad scientist is over there. 
extending a few wires so the ones that came up a little shorter than expected were just um the wires that would take me over to uh my vtex solenoid and the oil pressure one there's another sensor right under there that you guys can plainly see and then we're that much closer to starting there's one um right here so my dumb self had these two backwards because they're about the same shape but this one has to go here because it's got that uh uh, temp sensor sensor which i think i have which should plug into the intake hose man my people do you have a civic si stock hose i know you guys are running fancy intakes i just want the stock one so i can rock the stock air box and yes i have the piece right there that supports that box bam see he has one too that's kind of phallic but it's very cool that's important so i don't get a check engine light I had to buy like five of those at one point because everyone I bought didn't work. And finally we plugged in one and the light went away. Problem solved. Moving on. All right, here we go. Um, so we filled up the coolant, um, at least mostly. So we put in all the stuff that we collected from uh, the other motor because it all still looked good. There was no oil or anything in that coolant. So why waste it? Everything's expensive. Reuse what you can. And it still looked very good. Very green, not dirty. Um, putting some oil a little concoction of 1030 plus a little 1040 for a little spice uh, this old girl needs an extra lubrication um, I got the battery connected um, I thought the camera was rolling tried to do a first start and it cranked over because very seldom do things start on the first time there's always one thing you forgot but I made sure to replace that ground that fried on the transmission side this ground is nice and tight a lot of times that caused problems just like the last thing and you forget it uh, everything else seems to be plugged in so we're checking over everything right now um, I'm also very fortunate when I went to prime the fuel system my my kill switch is a fuel cutoff switch so when I flip that switch into the on position my fuel pump starts like on its own like separately of everything else one of the things that we didn't do was we did not <coughs> excuse me we did not um, Set the distributor. Uh, the timing should be good over here because it was good when it was taken out. So now we just gotta set it here because this came off the other motor, like all this stuff from here. So I'm gonna hop in there. I'm gonna try to fire this bad boy up, and you guys can come along with me for that. There also might be the, the fire board might be, be changed. Man, let's see what cover on. Don't have to do it there. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know it's out of gear. This time, power's on, the lights are on. You didn't happen to drop the distributor, did you? Did I? Definitely not. I don't think I'm going to take it off, or did I? But it didn't get dropped. Um, so that was the second attempt. Um, we're going to open up a few things, maybe the firing order is wrong or we're gonna make some adjustments all right take 100 we tried to start this joker so many stupid times it was ridiculous um what we finally ended up doing was taking off the distributor oh yeah that plastic heat shield can you put your light on that um it's probably burning off from the headers yep or maybe it's the headers are burning but that plastic piece is so close that, that fan is just making adjustments with the heat but yeah we got it fired up uh there's still a lot of things that we need to do before it hits the street axle nuts have to go back on uh cotter pins have to go on the lower ball joints and then the brakes have to be done and then it should be roadworthy all right here's the last look before we button it up for the night uh, it's not super late just time for dinner super hungry right now but yeah so i, I talked about the few things that need to be done uh, some of the more important things are um we had the transmission on its side and it was not leaking oil which means there is no oil in the transmission so we didn't even let it warm up because um it's not good to run it without oil in the trans so we will load it up with some 1030 um finish topping off the radiator reattach the strut tower bar because it's awesome and then um the brakes need to be done as well. Also, I swapped back to the um, Civic SI computer because I had the EM1 computer in there, but then one of the things we tried as we were cleaning up was 
uh, the GSR computer because obviously it just plugs right in without the jumper harness. Uh, you gotta use this expensive jumper harness now. It used to be like 60 bucks. Now it's like double that. It's like 140. <sighs> so make sure that you can be carb compliant when it comes time to ref these bad boys. Well, I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you for uh, watching my video. I'm sorry it was super loud when the car was starting. That's what it sounds like all the time. I think it'll quiet down once there's a, some sort of intake on there a little bit. But I can't wait to see how this feels. I know it won't be the same as my GSR, but it'd just be good to be back on the road. Thank you.